Self-fulfilling prophecies are a thing in Hollywood. For years, there was a notion that movies released in January and February would flop at the box office, and this generally was the case. The thinking was that people were still broke from the holidays, and something small but relatively expensive like going to the cinema is the first thing to get budgeted out. But then, Deadpool and Black Panther came out, both in February in their respective years, raking in truckloads of money and revealing this fallacy for what it was. It was self-sustaining. Studios thought people didn't go to the movies at the start of the year, so they didn't release movies worth seeing. And because there were no movies that anyone wanted to see, people didn't go to the movies. With that notion shattered, more big releases came out in January and February now than they did before, such as Uncharted, Kingsman, and Ant-Man the next year. That brings us to the topic of today's video, the curse of the video game movie. It's been around for basically as long as there have been movie adaptations of games, and it pretty much states that making a good movie based on a video game property is impossible. And for years, this curse seemed to be true. Both movies and TV shows really struggled to produce something that could unite fans of the property, new audiences, and critics alike. The fallacy held, because even though they tried with big names, big budgets, and big marketing pushes, the general consensus is that the vast majority of these movies were bad. Until... Yes, it was Arcane that blew this notion out of the water completely. Set as a prequel to League of Legends, and using existing locations and characters from the games, it should have struggled, and yet the show is great. Now, I appreciate that some points out it's a show, not a movie, so the curse shouldn't apply, but all the same factors do, so my question is, how did Arcane overcome the odds? That is what we're going to be discussing today, and the three key reasons I think Arcane succeeded where so many shows failed. I'm Keegan with Channel Frederator, and this is Arcane vs. The Curse of the Video Game Movie. Reason 1. Execution This is probably the most visible of the reasons Arcane is great. It's down to good execution. So while we won't spend too much time here, it is worth highlighting. The writing, the animation, the music, the voice acting, they're all spot on. Yes, these are the nuts and bolts of filmmaking, but nuts and bolts matter. A show that can turn Jinx from the Harley Quinn-esque wildcard into a tragic but inevitable product of her environment is looking at a great writer. That isn't something that's easy to achieve. Especially not when you consider that at no point does Jinx significantly diverge from her already established persona, keeping things engaging for both new and existing audiences. Animation that has her going from innocent little girl to something from your worst nightmares in full frame over the course of just 5 seconds, that's most definitely a work of art. Songs written specifically to fit the show, highlighting the tragedy of a character's fall. These are the kinds of things that are going to stay with you. Voice acting on a level that earned Ella Purnell an Annie Award and have nobody question the merit of it. And this is an incredibly shallow dip into one character, when it really extends to every single aspect of the show. Now, this all explains why Arcane is good, but it does not explain the central thesis behind this video, namely answering what sets it apart from other video game properties. To understand that, we're gonna have to take a closer look at the people who made the show happen. Reason 2. The People This one is, of course, very closely tied to execution. The people who made that execution possible. Good art is hard to make, so having talented artists working on it is kind of a requirement. But that's too simplistic, because it carries with it the implication that all these other movies didn't have any talented artists working on them. While this might be true in some cases, just by the sheer number of projects that have seen the light of day, statistically, some of these should have had talented people involved in the production, and yet almost all of them failed. Part of it could be that not every character is well suited to the material they have to work with. Rather infamously, the cast of the first Resident Evil movie was told to play through the games, but some of them watched walkthroughs instead. While that obviously isn't the only thing to blame for that movie turning out not that great, it is an interesting indication about how invested the people were in the project. For many people in the industry, making any particular film doesn't have to be a passion project, it's just their job, because they also have bills and mortgages to pay. This is where two of the most central names come in, Alex Yi and Christian Link. To them, Arcane was a passion project. They weren't doing it as a creator for hire scheme. They already worked for Riot Games and had some previously worked on music videos based on the IP. More on that a little bit later. When Link approached the leadership about his idea for an extremely expensive show, he was told to get out. These two had to fight the developer every step of the way to get this project approved and funded. 
that is a sign of true passion, not just for the show, but also for the franchise at large. Now, obviously, the success of Arcane is not only down to these two being passionate, but across a massive team of talented creatives, sadly, we just don't have the time to give every single one of them the credit they deserve. I'm also going to give a shout out to Reason 2.1, Riot Games giving Yi and Link the budget and an impressively long leash to work out their artistic vision with minimal studio interference. Even Link described it as a risky bet in bridging the rift because there were no guarantees, and that's just because it was a risk. For Tish, the animation studio had to hire tons of new staff to transition from producing mostly music videos, including the music video that introduced Jinx by the way, and they were banking on Riot coming through with the paychecks. This requires a lot of trust when 300 people are counting on that money. That trust that Riot put in its creators is pretty key to Arcane working out. So is that it? The right creator at the right time with the right execution and a studio willing to back it? While I do think that covers most of it, there is one more reason why Arcane succeeded where so many other projects failed, and it's the reason it exists in the first place. Reason 3. The Game A problem that all video game movies have encountered is the fundamentally different ways in which audiences engage with the movie as opposed to how they engage with a game. In brief, games are interactive and movies are not. That might sound obvious, but it makes a world of difference, especially when transitioning between the two. Games are all about overcoming challenges, be that solving a puzzle, defeating a boss, getting to an objective within a certain time limit, you name it. The loss of the interactive component is frequently part of the reason why video game movies struggle. Losing an aspect of something always begs the question of why you wouldn't go to the source material. Games hold that benefit over books, say, where a movie adaptation loses some narrative depth since books can describe a character's thoughts, but it gains the visual element so it evens out. But games are already a visual medium, they're packed with spectacle frequently by design, so just retreading these same stories doesn't add anything. And that right there is why I think League of Legends was uniquely suited for adaptation. In League, the player does not interact directly with the story. All of the playable characters get some background and character descriptions, but to call this bare bones would be generous. The dialogue gives them personality, but it's not exactly a deep and meaningful conversation to learn how they became the characters they are now. There is lore surrounding locations, items, characters, races, but most of it is implicit. To name just one example, it was never actually confirmed in any League material that Vi and Jinx are sisters. While there was fan speculation on this based around a few lines of dialogue, the confirmation of these two being sisters didn't actually come until Arcane. The fact that League's characters and story were largely relegated to the background in the game meant that there was a huge amount of potential for creators to expand on that in an adaptation. Toss in the fact that the creators that helmed Arcane were deeply invested and familiar with these characters, and that is the true reason Arcane would rise up where so many others fell. The game provided the framework, but it was now up to the showrunners, the writers, and the animators to turn it into something solid. So what does that mean going forward? Will the curse finally be lifted? At the moment, that still seems pretty unlikely. There are projects in the cards, including for games like Duke Nukem, Ghost of Tsushima, and even Space Invaders. What those projects will end up looking like? Well, your guess is as good as mine. One of the more tangible projects is The Last of Us, still a few months out at the time of writing, and while it certainly has potential, it will really struggle against the third reason why Arcane did work. The Last of Us is very heavily story-based, with deep exploration of the characters, so what exactly will a TV adaptation add? Of course, that one was already in development by the time Arcane hit on Netflix, so its influence will be pretty limited, but it's hard to imagine a scenario where there are no shows or movies going forward taking inspiration from how Arcane was adapted. It was far too popular and won far too many awards to go completely unnoticed by Hollywood executives. I just hope the creators of the Gran Turismo movie don't feel the need to convince us the life of the faceless guy behind the helmet was a tragedy of his own doing all along. And that, friends, is how Arcane avoided the curse of the video game movie. Although there could be other things that factored in here. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments. And make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other juicy analysis. That's all the time we have for today, so thanks for watching, and remember, Frederator loves you.